The following podcast is provided by Athera Pharma and Answers for Elders Radio. And welcome everyone to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we are here to talk about Alzheimer's clinical trials. And most importantly, there are a lot of populations out there, and this is really something that's close to my heart, that are marginalized. They don't necessarily have the same type of access to healthcare and different options and medical breakthroughs and things like that. And so we are very grateful to Athera Pharma for sponsoring Dr. Bernardo Ng. And Dr. Ng is a Mexicali native who has started his private practice in Imperial County in 1994. And then he became a medical doctor in the University of Nuevo Leon in 1987. And he is now in um, basically a, on the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology and Psychosomatic Medicine, as well as the Mexican Board of Psychiatry. He is also a distinguished fellow of the American Psychiatric Association. And we are very proud to have him on our program as a medical uh, Alzheimer's trials expert, Dr. Ng. And I'm sorry, I just totally screwed that up in the, in the introduction, <laughs> but I am very honored to have you on the show. Welcome to Answers for Elders. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And um, yes, I'm, I'm very interested also in uh, opening opportunities uh, for underserved populations, in this mm -hmm. case, the Latino Latinx population of the United States. It's so important. And I, I've i heard stories time and time again, especially the, pro the, the projection of Alzheimer's and, and how it can... Um, you know, affect marginalized communities because they're not getting the early care in advance. And I know you came from Mexicali, Mexico. So you probably saw a lot of Latino, um, you know, in that area, not getting the proper care. Did you not? Oh, well, I'm, I'm Latino myself. And yes. Uh, yes, I graduated from a Mexican medical school and then came to the U.S. to do residency in psychiatry. Uh -huh. and, uh, I've been uh, fortunate that I'm certified both by the Mexican and the American board and still able to practice on both sides of the border. That's so it, it, I didn't just see this when I grew up. I keep seeing it. Yeah. And, um, so as as you know, clinical trials are the the core of, of the progress in pharmaceutical treatments. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have to say that most medical conditions do not get treated only with medications. There are many other forms mm -hmm. of treatment, but in, in the particular case of medications, it is only with medical uh, clinical trials that mm -hmm. can prove or not prove that the medication actually yeah. works. And the problem with uh, the lack or the insufficient participation of Latinos in clinical trials, specifically in dementia, is impressive. As you know, uh, Latinx are the largest minority in the U.S., right? And right. that encompasses 16 to 18 percent mm -hmm. of the population. Right. And the participation of Latinos in clinical trials for Alzheimer's is anywhere from one to two percent. My goodness. So that tells you the the how how hard it is to ascertain that whatever is approved under those conditions will work the same, mm -hmm. both for efficacy and safety in the Latino population. Right, right. And I'm sure, um, you know, by not having access, that goes from probably lack of funds uh, to be able to afford health care. Um, you know, what do you think causes that even more? Well, okay. So participating in clinical trials also has a component of uh, not enough information, not knowing the importance of why it is to participate mm -hmm. and fear, okay? Yeah. So, you know, it, the thought of participating in a clinical trial and voluntarily, mm -hmm. you know, put yourself through a medication that has not mm -hmm. been approved may sound scary, mm -hmm. but the reality is that that's how, number one, progress occurs, and number mm -hmm. two, you can actually access to a treatment that 
uh, will be years before it's actually available mm -hmm. uh, in regular pharmacies, right? Right. Uh, so unfortunately, the growth of the Latino population in this country feel distant to that. And mm -hmm. that is something that we have continuously been uh, living with in my community and working sure with in my community. Yeah. Well, and I think too, as, as um, you know, you hear the stories of decades ago when there were trials going on, a lot of the placebos and stuff went to people of color, um, which really is unfair. And it's, it's so crazy, but I'm sure that that's been, you know, escalated through the years. Has it not been that oh, way? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm very glad that you mentioned that because any of us, uh, people interested in participating in the execution of clinical trials mm -hmm. have to go through this rigorous training, even before mm -hmm. being approved yeah. or, or hired for any of them, uh, which is called the, the good clinical practices. And it speaks a lot about right. this history that you're talking about and and uh how trials still in the 20th century happened uh unethically right and and how they put uh people of color uh, through tests uh without yeah. having uh, received their consent without informing them of what was going to happen and yes i think that has left a scar uh, of course it has in our minority populations in the mm -hmm. country and um, it, I think it's very useful that uh, media like this uh, can inform people of how much that has uh, changed, evolved, yeah. like you said, escalated. So yeah, we is you know every single step is supervised by a review committee, a, mm -hmm. a ethical review committee. Any step is uh, approved by the FDA. Mm -hmm. With that, any of these companies could not even uh, contact us. To... Right. And all clinical studies obviously are overseen by, you know, a higher situation. It's not like, like before you could do your own little thing in the backyard. There wasn't computers. There wasn't, there wasn't that kind of oversight that there is now with clinical trials. Is Am, am I correct? Oh, yes. And every single step of the trial is very, very closely monitored. I mean, right. and yet the monitors are monitored by someone else. <laughs> you yes, know? exactly. So, That's what, yeah. kind of what I was saying. So, yeah. so you know, in doing, I know engaging in a cr clinical trial, I, I think it's exciting. I mean, we're right now seeing so many breakthroughs with Alzheimer's disease, and that's really, really um, wonderful. At the same token, I, I can sure that a lot of the the public doesn't isn't aware of, you know, what they have the opportunity to be involved in when they do. And you've obviously been doing, uh, been in charge of Sun Valley Research Center. So, what is your mission, I guess, overall for your business? Your oh well, uh, God, thanks for asking because we're very proud of what we're putting together since two thousand eight. And uh, even as of now, we, we're the only standalone clinical uh, trial site. Uh -huh. And we've been bringing the opportunity of participating in clinical trials to people in Imperial County uh, uh -huh. for decades now, specialized in central nervous system. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I'm a psychiatrist, so that's my area of expertise. Absolutely. And Alzheimer's is my passion and i've been treating uh older people for a long time and um there's some peculiar peculiarities about the latino or hispanic population in in this country that uh they live longer and which is interesting uh at, at some time ago it was called the Hispanic paradox or the Latino paradox wow. with less access to care, they live longer, right? How is that possible? But it turns out that when you look into the detail, they may live longer in average, but also with less quality of life or more uh, uh, morbidity with more mm -hmm. level of disease. Mm -hmm. And among other things, lack of access, like you were mentioning, but then also, um, lack of knowledge that some things can be treated earlier right 
Uh, and the case of Alzheimer's, many times they say, well, you know, it's part of aging. It's part of aging that he or she starts forgetting things yeah. and, and, and transmitting the message that what we're talking about is a disease that early on starts to cause some changes that can be manifested, mm -hmm. very subtle right. uh, changes uh, may already be announcing a disease. Uh, a lot of uh, people of my uh, ethnic background look at it. You know what? If you don't ask, if you don't know, it's better. Let's know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's part of a cultural thing. Uh, that has gone for the different generations. We're trying to change. That's part of our mission. Educate right. the community, bring services, bring trials to their door. And uh, that's what we've been doing for, what is it, 15 years now. Yeah. And Dr. Ng, he is the chief medical officer, I guess we could call you, of the Sun Valley Research Center. And um, you are located where specifically, Dr. Ng? Yes, we're in Imperial County, which is right at the southeast corner of the state in the border uh -huh. with Mexico. Nice. And you can find us in sunvalleyr.com. Our number is 760-545-0123. That's fabulous. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that one more time. Um, and it is www.sunvalleyr.com. And absolutely number is 760-545. Four five zero one two three. Is that correct, Dr. Ring? That is correct, Ms. Newman. And, and Dr. Ring and I, we're going to talk, come back, and we're going to talk a little bit about this whole stigma of clinical trials, um, how to just really find the real truth in what's going on. And there's a lot of good news surrounding us as we come back right after this. The preceding podcast was provided by Athera Pharma and Answers for Elders Radio. For more information about the Alzheimer's clinical trial, go to atheraclinicaltrials.com.